Welcome to Further Solutions Academy once again. Um, the best blog where you can watch your tutorial videos on science, um, concepts, uh, as well as engineering concepts. Um, I hope that you click the like and the subscribe button as you subscribe to our page and reach out to us if there are concepts that you need more explanations about or you have questions on. So for today's class, we'll be talking about chemical equilibrium. Um, this is a very, very a very very easy concept but yet many of us mistaken it because of some of the factors that affect chemical equilibrium but before we go into the factors that affect chemical equilibrium you should understand that there are some reactions we have reaction a to b this is and this is an irreversible reaction and we also have a or some of us could love it to write it this way. So this is a reversible reaction. Now, a reversible reaction is a reaction that can proceed in either direction. While an irreversible reaction is a reaction that can only proceed in one direction, one way forward. But this can go from A to B. And B can also go from A to B, B to A. So which means that this is clearly stating that this is your reactant and this is your product. Why this is clearly stating that this could be your reactant to give your product and this could also be your reactant to give this as your product in the forward or the backward reaction. This is the forward reaction, this is the backward reaction. Right, so under chemical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium takes place in reversible reversible in reactions. It only takes place in reversible reactions. It only takes place in reversible reactions. And not just any reversible reaction. A re reversible reaction that is in a dynamic state. That is in a dynamic state. That is in a dynamic state. So what is chemical equilibrium? Chemical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium is, um, is um, a state a state where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the state of the backward reaction. That means concentrations are still being exchanged. Concentrations are still being exchanged from reactant to product and from product to reactant. But nevertheless, there is the same concentration that is coming this way is the same concentration that is going this way. Or the same amount of factor that is going this way is the one that is coming this way. So that is when we say that we have chemical equilibrium. So it occurs mainly in dynamic states. It occurs mainly in dynamic state and in irreversible reactions. So, for if we say that um, chemical equilibrium is a state where the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction, so that means rate of forward is equals to the rate of backward reaction, right? Backward reaction. That means that there are some factors that are considered to make this position possible. There are some factors that are considered to make this situation possible. And some of these factors are examined by a scientist known as um, 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 Chatelia. Chatelia. Chatelia gave a principle on chemical equilibrium. And let's talk about the Chatelia's principle. All right. So on the board, we have like I said, Le Chatelier is um, a scientist. He's a French scientist that um, came up with discussing how some factors can affect chemical equilibrium. And he realized after conducting a series of experiments and he stated a principle that we hope for today. He says that the Chatelier's principle states that if a strain or an external factor or stress or an external factor is exerted or applied to a system in equilibrium. Okay, first. What do we mean when we say external factor? This will make us to understand that there are a series of factors that the Chatelier was talking about, and these factors could be temperature, this factor could be pressure, this factor could be catalyst, this factor could be concentration, and so on and so forth, right? So it says if an external factor such as this is exerted to a system that is in equilibrium, the system itself 
we shift in the direction in a direction to neutralize or to annul or to adjust or to cancel the effect of that factor or strain. So all of these factors they can affect the system in equilibrium because, like I said. Uh, a system in equilibrium is the one in which the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction. Like I said, I said there are some factors that are considered that makes it to be at that particular place. Doesn't mean reaction has stopped. Please take note. Reaction does not stop at equilibrium, but it means that at that particular point, there is a balance. It's just like, for instance, let's say we have a seesaw. A seesaw. And we have mass A. And we have mass B. At the point in time when mass A steps on the seesaw, it comes up, right? When mass B steps on, um, sits on the seesaw, it comes downward, depending on the weight of mass B. But there is a point when it starts wavering until this thing becomes balanced. Now, when it becomes balanced, it doesn't mean that mass A and B are left. But what it means is that even in the presence of this mass A and B, there is a system where there is an equilibrium of this, right? So this kind of these this, this, um, factors can affect a um, system that is in equilibrium. So the next thing is what it called, what it said here is system. What is a system? A system is more or less like saying um, is, 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 is the one undergoing the reaction. Under the concept of thermodynamics, there are two things. We have what we call the system, and there's another thing we call the surroundings. Let me give a, 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 very, a, very, a very simple example for us. If you are boiling your water, if you are boiling your water, if you are boiling your water on your triple stand, right? You are boiling your water on a triple stand. And this is boiling. Now, the water inside this is the system. Now, every other thing that you have around, this is the surrounding. While this is your system. Do you get it? So, under thermodynamic concepts, we have the system and we have the surroundings. So, the surrounding could affect the system. The system could affect the, the surrounding. That is why there are different kinds of systems. There are different kind of system. We, have, we can have a system to be isolated. We can have a system to be um, to be to, to just different. The one that relates with the surrounding, or the one that doesn't relate with the surrounding. But that is not what we are here to discuss. This is just by the way. So quickly, let's just get to understand how exactly do these factors affect a system in equilibrium, and how their influence is far controlled by the system. Follow us. All right, so um, we have um, different factors. We have the one for the temperature, we have the one for the pressure, and we have the one for the concentration. So let's talk about the effects of um, temperature on chemical equilibrium. Now, you cannot discuss effectively the effects of temperature on chemical equilibrium without understanding the enthalpy of the reaction. So the enthalpy is highly important. That is why there are many times, especially in um, the, 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 the senior secondary school examinations or the um, 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 jump exam or post jump, you see that most times some people have issues with this because they make a mistake. They don't know whether it's just, some people just choose any options, which is not supposed to be. I believe by the end of this tutorial, you will not do that again. So let's say we have, the, the, the enthalpy needs to be really, really considered. Remember that when we say, this, we have a reaction like this, A plus B equals to C plus D, right? Now, it is released in A to B, A to this reaction. That means this is what exothermic. Right? So that means the enthalpy of this reaction, if you are given in an examination, will most likely be negative. Please watch out. Some questions they will not tell you whether it's exothermic. They will tell you whether it is each release. All they will give you is an equation with the enthalpy minus delta H. So you need to tell yourself whether it is exothermic or it's endothermic. I believe you should know that exothermic is negative. While the one that absorbs it is definitely endothermic and this is always giving you a positive 
delta H, positive enthalpy. Positive enthalpy. So I said that there is a need for you to understand the enthalpy before you can answer any question on the effect of temperature when it comes to chemical equilibrium. First, let's discuss in an endothermic system. In an endothermic system. Um, in an exothermic, okay, okay, let me, let me, let me do this this way. Um, increase in temperature. Let's have exo and let's have our endo. Right? And let's also have our decrease in temperature. Now, increase in temperature, you need to first realize something. When I'm increasing the temperature of a system, it means I'm adding more heat to it. Remember that an exothermic reaction is to hang in the product side that it is released, right? So if I am adding more heat to it, it means I'm going to be having excess of heat at the product side. Now, because the system realized that this thing is trying to disrupt this the organization, the organization, so what it does is, is when you increase the temperature in an exothermic reaction, the reaction shifts backward, producing more of the reactants or more of A and B in this case. Because why? While increasing the temperature, you're already producing excess heat because heat is released already. So you are trying to produce excess heat in this particular surrounding of which the system would actually adjust and give the heat to where is needed. Where is needed? Because in a exothermic reaction, heat is being given out, right? It is being given out. So if you, if you increase the temperature in an exothermic reaction, what happened? Equilibrium shifts backward. Equilibrium shifts backward or favors the backward reaction. Favors the backward reaction. But in an endothermic reaction, in an endothermic reaction, when you increase it, remember that an endothermic reaction needs it to undergo. It absorbs it for it to take place. So when you increase it, you are fueling how fast the reaction will take place because it is needed. Imagine starving an endothermic reaction of heat. We'll get to that in the decrease. So let's talk about fueling the process. And it's just like, let me say, I, am, I, I need heat so that I can carry out some of my activities. Now, for you to help me to produce more of the product, you need to give me enough heat. So, increase in temperature would actually favor the forward reaction or shift this equilibrium forward. Shift this one forward or shift forward. Shift it forward. Now, decrease in temperature is more or less like saying because an exothermic reaction releases heat. So, you decreasing the temperature is like you are helping how much of excess heat will be produced. So, what happens is what well, it favors the forward reaction here. The forward reaction. And in exothermic reaction now, exothermic reaction needs heat. And now you are depriving it, you're starving it of it. So what happens is what well, it favors the backward reaction. Are you getting it? It shifts the reaction backward. It shifts the reaction backward. It shifts the reaction backward. So this is how we can understand the influence of or the effect of temperature on chemical equilibrium and how you do this is by first understanding the enthalpy of the reaction if you are faced with a question let's say you are giving um you are giving um a, a, a question such as um, um 3h2 plus n2 to give you 2nh3 right and you are given that this is minus 92 kilojoules per mole 
minus 92 kilojoules per hour. They say, what is the effect of temperature on this system? Remember that this system is already an exothermic reaction. So if you increase it, if you are increasing an endothermic, exothermic reaction because it is negative delta H, right? If you increase it, what will happen? It will, the reaction will go, it will favor the backward reaction. Because why? Excess heat is already produced when we increase the temperature. So do we understand that? That is that on the effect of the temperature. Let's get to pressure. Now, under pressure, you need to understand certain things. First, there are tricky questions that you get in jam or you get in head. Now, one of those questions is they'll give you a question and they will give you the reactant and a product and you will see solid or liquid in the reactant and a product. Please, effect of pressure on that system is zero. Take note. Effect of pressure in that system is what? Zero. Because effect of pressure will only take place on two different conditions. Number one is that the, the um, reactants and products must be gases. All gases. Please take note must be all gases. So how jam tricks you is first they give you a system and they say, okay, maybe they put liquid here and they put solid here. And they say, what's the effect of pressure? And you just say, you shift it to the right, shift it to the left. Without considering, first check your state, okay? Then the second point is that effect of pressure will only take place when there is an unequal number of moles of reactants and products on equal number of moles. That means if I have three moles here and three moles here, pressure will not have any effect. If I have two moles here and two moles here, pressure will not have any effect. But look at this particular question. Now, these two conditions need to be satisfied before you have any effect of pressure on chemical equilibrium. So now, here I have three moles. How did I get my three moles? Two moles from A, and this is one mole. I hope we know that. Then this is one mole of this and three moles of this. So here, this particular system can undergo effect of pressure. This particular system can undergo effect of pressure. Now, when we increase pressure, what happens? So effect of pressure um, increase in pressure decrease in pressure now when you increase pressure please take notes when you increase pressure you need to understand that the concept of effect of pressure on the it, it undergoes under the principle of Avogadro and even Boyce law now Avogadro's let's start with Boyce law Yes, okay, let's just use Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law was telling us that um, that we can actually equate the volume of gases with the number of moles of the gases, right? So that means this is like two volumes. If I say this is um, the A, A has two volume, which is two moles. B has one volume, which is one mole. This has one volume. This has three volume. So that means I can say that this is two mole or two volume. This is one mole or one volume, and this is one mole or one volume, and this is three moles or three volumes, right? So the proportionality between the volume and the pressure, remember from Boyce's law, please check our page, under the um, gases, we have done concepts like that before. So on Boyce's law, you see that they share an inverse proportionality between your volume and your pressure, right? So when you increase pressure, in the in the system for a system in equilibrium, what happens is it favors the side where there are fewer number of moles, favors or shifts to the side with fewer or lesser number of moles, number of moles or volume. Remember, I said volume of most most and volume can be used. So in this particular situation, if I increase my pressure, remember that when I'm talking about this, I'm considering E all the reaction. So let me write this clearly again. This is 2A plus B to give me um, C plus D. Now, please take note of the take note of the states. Right? So yeah, all together. I have three volume. 
here I have four volume. So if I increase pressure, it will not favor this, it will favor this. So you see it favors the backward reaction. Please, I don't want to say favors backward reaction here because in your question or in your classwork or your tax that you'll be given, you may have your fewer number of moves in this side. Do you get it? You may have your fewer number of moves in this side. So I would not want to mix it up for you. So that's why I'm saying that it feel, feel, shifts to this side. So if I increase pressure, it shifts backward. It favors the backward reaction because here yeah, I have no number, no number of moves. And if I decrease it, it shifts or favors the side with more number of moves or volume. So if I decrease the pressure, if it was the side with more, because why? Remember that, remember from collision theory, this is what is played here. When we have more volume, more moves, the increase in pressure actually can affect them. So you increase pressure where you have fewer number of moves, and that is why we can work here. Just like the example we had earlier, let's use that example again. 3H2 plus N2 to give you 2NH3, gas, gas, gas. Now, if I increase pressure in this reaction, what would happen? What is the effect of temperature or pressure in this reaction? Oh, okay. I wish I could get response for that. But then, increasing pressure for this kind of reaction will favor the forward reaction. Why? Because here I have four moles, here I have two moles. And remember, it favors the side with fewer or lesser number of moles. So it will favor this side than this side. Do you get it? So that is that on increase or effect of pressure on effect of pressure on chemical equilibrium. All right. So to the third one again, the effect of concentration. Now, one thing you should know about this is that the more concentrated a part is, the more reactive that thing is. The reason why. I cannot give you the raw acid right now. It's because it is very acidic, quite corrosive. But then I could give you a diluted one for your titration practicals because I believe that what well, the reaction is not going to be as a corrosive one, which is the one that is at the bottom, right? So now, effect of concentration. The first thing you need to understand is which side are we talking about? Remember that this is a reversible reaction right because this is a reversible reaction we can as well this can be the reactant today if it's going this way but if it is coming this way it becomes what the products because this becomes the reactant so you need to first understand okay now you are asking your wife what is the effect of concentration on this reaction you need to know which side is it the forward reaction or the backward reaction. Now, that will help us to understand this. The effect of concentration is not so difficult. So that means, let's say for the forward reaction, for the forward reaction, if I increase the concentration of A, it will favor the forward reaction. Or let me say for reaction one, let me not say forward reaction, so that we will not jump with that out. This is reaction one, this is reaction one, two. So, for reaction one, increase in concentration of A or B, because they are both the reactants. So, I may increase A and leave B. It will still have the same effect, right? It will still have the same effect. Will yield more of C or D. We use more of C or D. So if I increase the concentration, it will favor the forward reaction. It will favor this reaction forward. It will shift forward. But then if I decrease, sorry, decrease in A or B, decrease in A or B, we have to favor the backward reaction. It will favor this side of the reaction. Do you get it? Now, likewise for will shift the system backwards. Now, likewise 
for the same thing when it comes to C and D. If I increase C or D, more of A and B will be produced. So that means if I increase C, it will go backwards. It will shift the equilibrium backward. If I increase D, it will shift. But if I decrease this, it will shift it back forward because it's trying to balance and um, make accommodation for the side that is deficient. Good, deficient. The side that is deficient. So that is how, or that is the effect of concentration on chemical equilibrium. Now we will be done with chemical equilibrium, but yet I feel the need to remind us of something, which is the effect of catalysts. The effect of catalysts. Now this is one of the questions that 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 many of us do not know. A catalyst has no influence or effect on chemical equilibrium. A catalyst has no effect on chemical equilibrium. It can either slower, it can either slow down or fasten the reaction, but Notwithstanding, if it's a system in equilibrium, it as it's as it's slowing down the forward reaction, it's slowing down the backward reaction, as it's fastening the forward reaction, it's fastening the backward reaction, but then it does not have an effect as an external factor. So right now we have come to the end of the factors affecting chemical equilibrium. Don't forget, do well to like or subscribe to our page. See you next time. Thank you very much.